how to add or remove spawnable actor from a level sequence with C++ in Unreal. Today's code is going to be pretty similar as the code of the previous video because a possessable actor and a spawnable actor are pretty similar, but the main difference is that the spawnable actor are not already present in the level, so we're going to have to figure out another way to identify them in the level sequence, so let's get to it. And here we are, as usual, in a completely empty header file, except the three function we're going to create today because, yes, we have three functions today. We have a function to get the spawnable from the level sequence, a function to add the spawnable into the level sequence and the function to remove the spawnable from the level sequence but first to get the spawnable grew id from the level sequence the grew id is what we use to identify all the actors that are inside the level sequence so everything inside the level sequence has a grew id and that's how we identify them but in our case it will be even better if we had a simpler way to identify the actors that are inside the level sequence other than the grew id and that's why today we're gonna use the spawnable name in the previous video we used the d actor itself to identify the object inside the level sequence matching the current actor we wanted to find inside the level sequence but in our case we don't have an object to look for because the actor is not already spawned in the level the actor is set as a spawnable so the only thing that we can maybe use to identify it is its name the name we want to give to that spawnable inside the level sequence because we cannot use the spawnable class either the class we want to use to spawn the spawnable in the level sequence because well it's a spawnable you can have as many instances as your spawnable as you want so you can have 10 warriors let's say you can have 10 chicken you can have 10 priests it doesn't matter you can have as many as you want in the same level sequence but in our case to be able to easily identify them we're just going to make sure that all of them have a unique name so we are able to find them a little bit later when we need them so when we add them we're going to name them and when we retrieve them we're going to use the name we used when adding them in the sequencer to identify them uh, okay so that's the name we're looking for in the level sequence so that's the spawnable name and obviously we also need the path of the level sequence in which we're going to look for that name so we have a level sequence we're going to load it look for that name inside the level sequence and as output we're going to return the uid of the spawnable actor matching that specific name good that's for the get spawnable uid from level sequence now it's time to add a spawnable into the level sequence to add a spawnable into the level sequence that's going to be super simple we just have to first uh, give it a name because we want to identify it later on so the spawnable name and then we need the path of the asset we want to add into the level sequence so is it the warrior skeletal mesh is it a tree static mesh somewhere? Is it a blueprint actor? Anything would work as long as you have an asset that you want to add inside the level sequence. So that's the asset path of the asset you want to add inside the level sequence. And finally, the path of the level sequence. If you want to add something inside the level sequence, you have to load the level sequence. So that's its path right here. As output, we're just going to return the UID of the actor we just added in the level sequence. That way, if you're looking for it, well, you have the UID right here. Otherwise, you can always find the UID using this first function right there. Okay, so that's to add the spawnable into a level sequence now the last thing is to remove the spawnable from the level sequence so remove spawnable from level sequence you just have to feed it the spawnable name it's going to find it by itself using the nice name that we have right here and obviously you also have to tell the function in which level sequence you're looking for that spawnable that you are trying to remove so that's the level sequence path right here and actually that's it for the header file now it's time to jump in the cpp and here as usual we're going to start with the includes and today we're just going to need two little includes right here we're going to need the level sequence and the movie scenes because like the possessable all the spawnable are also saved inside the movie scene so we need the movie scene to be able to modify it those two includes are inside two different modules so the level sequence and the movie scene module so we have to make sure that in the build.cs we have both the level sequence that i have right here and also the movie scene module so good i have both my modules inside my build.cs file so it should compile properly let's go back in the cpp and now it's time to focus on the first function the get spawnable uid from level sequence and as usual the first step is going to be to load the level sequence because we only have its path right here now we're going to try to retrieve the level sequence with that path so static load object using the path we receive as input the level sequence path which should load the level sequence so that's going to give us the level sequence right here i'm just going to make sure that my level sequence is not equal to null because if the level sequence is not valid i'm not going to be able to try to find my spawnable inside that level sequence because well i don't have a level sequence to look into so here if my level sequence is null i'm just going to return right away telling that it was not a success i was not able to find my uid inside that level sequence because well the level sequence doesn't exist but if i have my level sequence and it's valid now we're going to look for the uid of the spawnable we're looking for using its name right here this is actually the annoying part of this video because there's no way to easily find a spawnable using its name instead what we're gonna have to do is loop through all the spawnable that are currently inside the level sequence so 
here in my level sequence I'm going to get my movie scene and get all the spawnables that are inside that movie scene so I have the spawnable count right here I'm doing a simple for each loop to loop through all the spawnables and then I'm going to use the index to get the spawnable at that index that's going to give me a spawnable that is currently inside the movie scene I have my spawnable now I'm going to also need the name of that spawnable to know if it matches the name that I receive as input so in my spawnable right here I'm just going to get its name but that's actually a little bit annoying because we cannot really just ask the name to the spawnable it doesn't know its name actually we have to ask the movie scene to give us the display name of one of its objects and the object we're going to look for is the spawnable obviously and like everything else inside the movie scene or inside the level sequence the only way to identify the objects that are inside them it's to go through the uid so that's why right here i'm using the uid of my spawnable to ask my movie scene to get the display name of my spawnable that i have right here and i'm converting it to a string because that's just giving me a name and i want to have a string to be able to easily compare it with a string that i receive as input just like that so i have my name and i'm comparing it to the name that i receive as input if they are the same well that's the spawnable i want to return because that's the spawnable with the right name so i'm just going to take the uid of that spawnable set it into the variable that i initialized right here so now i have my uid saved inside my variable and i'm ready to return it at the end of the function just before that though i'm just going to check to see if it was a success so if my uid is valid if the uid is valid it means that i was able to find a spawnable matching the name i received as input so this is going to tell me if that was a success and i'm just going to give that information to the user and i'm also going to return the uid obviously because that's the purpose of this function right here so good that's it for the first function the function that gets the spawnable uid from the level sequence now it's time to add the spawnable into the level sequence so here it is to add the spawnable into the level sequence the first step is to make sure that the spawnable name is not already used inside the level sequence because we don't want to have multiple spawnable with the same name otherwise we won't be able to identify them later we have to make sure that the names are unique so here i'm just going to check okay try to get me the spawnable uid matching that name right here the name that we receive as input using obviously the level sequence path so inside that level sequence that we receive we're going to look for that name and if we find it that's going to return us a valid uid right here and if the uid is valid then i'm just going to return right away because there's already a spawnable with that name inside the level sequence i don't want to add a second one otherwise we won't be able to identify them later so here i'm just going to say that it was not a success i was not able to add a spawnable into the level sequence because i already have a spawnable with that name inside the level sequence so i'm just going to return right away i'm also going to return the uid why not if you want it you have it that's the uid of the spawnable that is already inside the level sequence you can do anything with it so okay good now we know that the uid is not valid and the spawnable is not already inside the level sequence so now it's time to add it inside the level sequence the first step is going to be to load the asset corresponding to the asset path we receive as input to make sure that it is valid and we are able to add it inside the level sequence so here i'm just going to do a static load object once again so using the static path that i receive as input that's going to give me a template or actually just the class that we want to use to add the spawnable inside the level sequence so that's my spawnable template right here if the spawnable template is not valid well i'm not going to be able to add it inside the level sequence because it's not valid so i'm just going to return right away but if it's valid it's now time to add it inside the level sequence but to do that we have to load the level sequence and then add the spawnable inside it so load the level sequence right here a static load object once again trying to load the level sequence matching the level sequence we receive as input that's going to give us a level sequence if that level sequence is not valid i'm not going to be able to add the spawnable inside it because the level sequence is not valid so i'm just going to return right away but once again if the level sequence is valid the spawnable is valid it's not already inside the level sequence now it's finally time to add it inside the level sequence which i'm gonna do right here by casting the level sequence to a movie scene sequence i can finally create my spawnable using the spawnable template that i just loaded right here i have my spawnable template that's going to create us a spawnable and add it inside the level sequence and actually that's it that's going to give us the uid of that new spawnable that we just added inside the level sequence just one little thing though i'm just going to make sure that this uid is also valid because it's possible that i was not able to create a spawnable for that template not all the objects can be spawnable inside the level sequence because for example a texture cannot be a spawnable so here if you provided the path of a texture that will be fine you would have a spawnable template that is valid right here because we were able to load the asset but that spawnable template is not usable inside the level sequence so it's an invalid 
added template. So here it's possible that the create spawnable function doesn't work because it's not able to create a spawnable for that class. But as long as the class makes sense, it's a static mesh, skeletal mesh, a blueprint, uh, anything that can be placed inside a level, that would work and the UID will be valid. But in the case that the UID is not valid, I'm just going to return right away. I was not able to add my spawnable inside my level sequence because, well, it's not a valid class. But let's say that it works. Now we were able to add the spawnable inside the level sequence, which should work most of the time if you don't provide any random path. Now it's time to rename the spawnable to identify it later. So here I'm just going to rename my spawnable using the set object display name this time instead of get object display name because we want to set its name, not get it. So I'm just going to set my object display name using the UID of the spawnable that was just added inside the level sequence. I have the UID right here. So that's the object I want to rename and that's the name I want to give to that object, which is the name I receive as input. And that's it actually, we're done. We were able to add the spawnable inside the level sequence and we also renamed it to be able to identify it later. So I can simply return my UID at the end of the function and the user can do anything with it because we were able to add the new spawnable inside the level sequence. But now it's time for the last function to remove that spawnable. So I have my remove spawnable from level sequence function right here. And the first step is to retrieve the spawnable from the level sequence. And it's actually the hardest thing to do. And we already did it using the get spawnable UID from level sequence. That's going to give us the UID of my spawnable using the name and the level sequence path, obviously. That's going to give us the UID. And if that UID is valid, it means that we were able to find the spawnable inside the level sequence. And now it's time to remove it. But first, I'm just going to make sure that it is valid because if it's not valid, I cannot remove it. So I'm just going to return right there. I was not able to find it inside the level sequence. So I don't have a valid UID, so I cannot remove anything. But if I have a valid UID, then I can simply load my level sequence to be able to modify it. So static load object, once again, loading the level sequence. And then we can ask the movie scene to remove the spawnable from the level sequence. So remove spawnable, feeding it the UID of the spawnable we want to remove. And that's it. The movie scene should be able to remove the spawnable from the level sequence. And it's going to tell us if it was able to do it, if it was able to remove it. And we're just going to use that information to return a little bit more information to the user to tell him if it worked or not. Uh, and that's it. Now we're done with the code. It's time to jump in Unreal to see if it worked. So here I am in Unreal in a pretty empty level and a completely empty level sequence in which we're going to add the spawnable. Uh, we're going to add the spawnable using a little user interface as usual. So here I can provide the name of the spawnable that I want to add into the level sequence. I can also provide the path of the spawnable asset that I want to add in the level sequence. And finally, the path of the level sequence I want to use, which is going to be preset to the level sequence I already have open in my editor. I have three buttons, one to add the spawnable, one to get the spawnable, and one to remove the spawnable. So we can play around with those. And in the graph, we're going to see that it's calling the three function we created today. So the add spawnable into level sequence, get spawnable UID from level sequence, and remove spawnable from level sequence. To add the spawnable, I'm going to provide the name, the path of my asset, and the path of my level sequence. To get the spawnable UID from level sequence, I just have to provide the name and the path of the level sequence. And same thing to remove the spawnable from my level sequence. Just the name and the path of the level sequence. And now we're going to see if it works. So I'm going to run my editor utility widget that the I have right here, scroll all the way to the bottom, and here I'm gonna start by adding a spawnable inside my level sequence. Uh, we can see that it worked, it added a spawnable. If I try to add it once again, it doesn't work because my spawnable is already there because I'm using the same name that I have right here. So my spawnable name that I have right here, I cannot reuse it because it's already inside the level sequence, but I can rename it. So let's say I rename it to my spawnable 2. This time I'll be able to add my spawnable 2 inside the level sequence, then my spawnable 3. I'm able to add the spawnable 3 inside the level sequence. Same thing, I can get the spawnable tree inside the level sequence. Same thing as I can get the spawnable without any number at the end, which is the spawnable that I have right here. And same thing, uh, since I'm able to get them from the level sequence, I should be able to remove them from the level sequence also. We can see that it removed the spawnable without a number from the level sequence because that's the one that I have right here. I can remove my spawnable tree if I want to. I'm able to remove it. And then if I try to remove it once again, well, I, it's not there. So I cannot remove the spawnable because it's not inside the level sequence. So I can add it one more time, then remove remove, add, remove, and you can add as many spawnable as you want, as many instances of the same spawnable as you want, as long as they have different name. That way you'll be able to always go back and remove the ones that you don't want to. So good. I guess that's gonna be it for today's video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye.